Hi, David O'Dell here with O'Dell Complete Concrete. Uh, we're having uh, RDO equipment, which uh, deals with uh, John Deere's and Vermeer equipment. They're bringing me this uh, little track out, and I'm going to demo it on this job. Also, I'm going to go through a few other pieces of equipment to do somewhat of a comparison of uh, what works the best. We're going to go through all of them. I did the Bobcat, I did the Dingo, and then I did, of course, this one. We're going to talk about all the specs of each one. And we're going to talk about a little bit about costs. And give you an idea of which uh, kind of equipment is going to be the best for the type of work that I do. The overall dimension of this is uh, 36 inches, so it'll go through. It might be a little less than 36, so it can go through a 3 foot. You're definitely not going to want to have to go through here a lot of times taking loads out because inevitably you're going to hit either the house or the wall. So that's when you have to wheel it through to the from the back to the front. You just load your wheelbarrows and wheel it out. This is a big concrete patio. You're going to end up going to go back here about a um, I think we did about tw 20 yards back here with some uh, channel drains and stuff because there wasn't a lot of slope from this room addition. Well today we're here with a uh, Vermeer little tool here that um, it's about the only one that's going to really fit in a backyard. We have a three foot opening and we filmed that going through the gate. We have a 38 inch opening with the gate off. This is 36 inches. Even the bucket is 36 although they do make a 42 but Justin here works for Vermeer and he brought this out and I'm going to demo this today. I've got a lot of dirt to remove in this backyard. Probably about 15 to 20 yards of dirt coming out of here. And what we'll do is we'll use this to scoop up the dirt. We'll either put it in wheelbarrows and run wheelbarrows to another waiting tractor in the front yard that'll lift it into the high dump. This won't dump into a high dump truck. It'll dump into a dump trailer, a high, high sided dump trailer, but not a full blown um, dump truck. So, yeah, so the lift on uh, the CTX 100 from Vermeer is 88 inches, which is the market leading uh, reach height for mini skid steer models. Mini skid steer, the mini coming from three feet wide or less. So um, actually I'm gonna rev it up and I'm gonna show you the 88 inches real quick just so we can get an idea. Oh dude. I really, I like the uh, horsepower of this thing. So the, uh, the CTX 100 has 40 horsepower diesel polar engine. So the 40 horsepower is the largest engine of any mini, mini skid steer on the market. It has about 1,100 pound uh, lifting capacity, so you can get a lot of dirt. Yeah, that'll reach our trailer. Yeah, I think so, huh? Yeah, that'll reach our trailer. And also, one of the newest features of this model right here is we have a new patented vertical lift system. So this can be piston instead of like this. All the other mini skid steers, even our mi uh, uh, mid-range model, has a horizontal facing piston, which causes mini skid steers to swing when they have weight. But with the vertical lift system, it balances the weight to the center of the machine. So you have less tilt back and forth oh, yeah, like that. Stable. It's more stable. Yeah. We have uh, the longest tracks on the market for ground pressure yeah. and stability. Oh yeah, so you're not gonna do it ahead or when you exactly. got a big load. Yeah. And uh, we're also all on track based system. No more wheels. Wheels are a thing of the past. Wheels are not gonna work in this soil. Exactly. You try to scoop up with wheels and your wheels you're gonna be spinning your wheels. Yeah. It's also one of the best uh, features of the Vermeer Mini Skid Steers is this safety pressure platform. So right now so this is weight activated. So since I'm off the machine, yeah, this won't, this won't, this ground drive won't activate, and um, the parking brake engages when you're off of it. You know, I tried some other machines. Mm -hmm. It didn't have this recessed platform here. The plate actually hung out here in wide open space, which doesn't seem real safe in tight where areas where you're turning. There could be something behind you that comes over your feet. Um, this is going to be uh, much safer. 
And like Justin was saying, this right here, if you step off of it, it locks up the whole system. So that's really good on a slope. And uh, what about the horsepower? Of the, how much horsepower we got here? So we got a 40 horsepower Kohler diesel engine. It's the largest uh, horsepower engine on the market for mini skid steers. And um, it also has the highest lift, like I was saying. We also have the longest tracks. And like David was saying, we have a uh, unique chariot style platform here so that when you get in the machine, your entire body is protected from yeah. each side. And also when you're going back and forth with a lot of weight, you know, this is gonna be swaying around a little bit. So it's good to have this cushion and the stability side to side right there. Do they have a, like a harness hookup possibly for this? To we don't around? we don't have one particularly, but I could look into something You could like rig that. one up on yeah. this too, mm -hmm. to really stabilize you yeah, in here with the harness that comes around. So yeah, kind of especially a, if you're gonna be working on any kind of slope. Yeah. Yeah. That would be nice to have a harness hook up for this thing, wouldn't it? Yeah, and we also have this um, this control bar right here. It's yeah. just a metal bar that's integrated into uh, the control system. And so when you're when you're operating the machine, all you need is just a slight grip. On the, you're always gonna be kind of gripping it with the center of your palms right here, so you always have stability. So when you're moving the machine around, you have one hand here, moving the arms, one hand here for stability, so you're never gonna oh, yeah. fall off. The nice thing about not having a harness, if the machine goes, you can get out of the you machine can bail. and yeah, let the machine exactly. go. So that's a, that's a nice the touch. Yeah, and you then, don't have to go down with the machine yeah. that way. And our uh, a good thing is our joystick right here is just a single joystick. A lot of other mini skid steers have kind of the two joystick setup. Oh yeah, this is very like a it's it's like a video game controller. Oh, that's good, and it's very sensitive. So you <laughs> so you just you just slowly push it forward and it will slowly go. But if you give it a far if you get to the max left, it's gonna go its max speed left. But oh, if you okay. barely push it oh, forward okay, like that, yeah. it'll slowly, it'll perfectly So it doesn't matter you what want. you have the idle set at, you can still control your speed by how much you actually move correct, this. Correct, yeah. And the machine will go faster the more speed you have, but this is always sensitive to how yeah. far it's you're nice. gonna push it forward it's variable, and back. like variable drive or something. Huh? Yeah, it's really good and responsive. Yeah, so if we uh, wanna start up the machine, we can start getting a little yeah, going. let's yeah, do it. Yeah, definitely. Start scooping some yeah. dirt out over here. And let here. me show you, uh, we have a little um, grading setting on here. Oh, a float? Yeah, a float, exactly. That's super easy to use. Oh, yeah. So you can set the float and it just stays at that level. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Let's check it out. grading option you just give the stick a little um forward give it a little little muscle into it you just push it forward and so that's gonna have this yellow hairpin trigger this is going to be the low flow side of the machine that's going to be for your grapple buckets any kind of claw function because it doesn't need that much power uh -huh. and then your high flow the bigger tubes right here is going to be this drive right here would you just engage forward and it'll stick so would it'll this be stick. for your breaker attachment this will be for your, your breakers say breakers augers augers uh trenchers we also got uh tillers and it locks. So and it, it locks can... just so, um, yeah, so when you're trenching, you're just going to have this engaged you let it spin. And when you're breaking, you could break for a little bit, mm -hmm. pull it back. And then pull into neutral. 
Yeah. And what and were you saying this one does? So this is for the low flow tubes. And that's so, for different attachments? So this is going to be for uh, different low power attachments, which, which is essentially this bucket. would be this bucket if it had um, little uh, oh, yeah. grapple claws on the top. Which oh, yeah. Those are pretty uh, big sellers because you just get the regular, you can just a normal bucket, up. but you can also get brush, tree, rock with the right. grapple. And that just goes into these smaller tubes here. How many? Which is operated here. What are all the attachments that you can put on this? Everything and anything you can think of. Oh, right. they um, got broom, they got sweepers. They we got, got yeah, sweepers, we got hedge trimmers, um, we got mowers, tillers, augers, trenchers, hydraulic uh, jackhammer breakers. I'm probably leaving a bunch out. Any kind of grapple for trees and brush, grapple buckets. We have the breaker here, so we'll use that too. We yeah. use that today. We'll do a little overview on that as well. That'll be fun. See its functionality. Mm -hmm. Then we got some, got a little concrete over here. It's a little concrete. As we came in that gate, that's yeah. where we're breaking it out. But this is this whole yard is going down about a foot. Okay. So it's mostly just dirt. Lots now, those, of digging today. Those mm -hmm. trees are staying, yeah. And you guys are putting in a patio? Yeah, yes. a concrete slab patio. Yeah. So this machine, the mini skid steers, is the best for this job for every uh, residential installation and construction job. Yeah, That's especially when you're function. in the backyard. When you're mm -hmm. in the backyard, this is all you're going to get back here. Yeah. Unless you take some of the block walls down. And who wants to do that? <laughs> who wants to do that? Just makes more work for yeah, you. Yeah, extra work. Yeah, so uh, David, if you want to give it a Yeah, give let's it a give run. it a shot. Let's yeah. see what this thing So when you pushes. start it up, it's just going to say uh, let the wait glow to throttle. throttle. Warm. Yeah, so just wait like two seconds. And then you, you could rev it up. They'll say wait to throttle. You know, okay. Wait two seconds. And then when it goes away, then you can go. All right. Go for it. Right, here we are back on the job site this is the second day uh, we got another tool out here we're gonna use kind of in comparison to the brand new one we had yesterday the one we had yesterday like we said it was it's about 40 horsepower this one here is uh, what was it 24 27 27 horsepower you know you can see it doesn't have the reach um, the tracks are a lot shorter but the real question is, is, will it move this dirt like the other one did? So that's what we're going to find out today. This one here is brand new is around 20. The other one's about 35 thou. So let's see what this one can do in this particular scenario that we use the other one on. This might be all you need with this type of ground. We're going to find out real quick. Also, I'd like to get some feedback on uh, what everybody else thinks is better. The Toro Dingo, the Ditch Witch, or the Vermeer. Uh, which one of uh, other people used out there and had good luck with them? Let me know in comments. Thanks for watching. All right, here we are back. The mechanics already checked this out. He's determined that the fuel pump's going bad, and that's why it's only it's shutting off periodically. No fuel to the engine means it's not going to run. So this, this one's got to get traded out. So we may end up getting a mini Bobcat or they may bring another track, I'm not sure which. Also, I'd like to know um, everybody out there that's rented any tools, what's their worst, uh, what's the worst situation they've ran into with rental tools on job sites? Um, 
I'm sure there's a lot of good stories out there. And uh, let me know about them on the comment section. Yeah, hi, back here on the job, third day. The second day, we shut down early because of a bunch of equipment failures. I tried a new tool rental company. It didn't work out. Now I went with a, uh, went back to the original, even though I got to drive further to get it. Um, this one's working really good. It's the same model as from the other rental company. The only difference is it works better. Maybe it's newer, better maintained. I'm not real sure, but um, this one's running and it get, it's getting the job done. It's it, it, for this type of soil, it's doing the same thing the big massive Vermeer 44 horsepower did. And this is what, 20 horsepower? 27. 27 horsepower. But this is getting it done for this soft soil. If you're getting into some hard soil or breaking concrete, probably would go with the Vermeer in that situation. But back here, uh, they're pretty much the same. So this is uh, from Baker Tool Rentals, Costa Mesa. The t well, what I forgot to film and show you is F&B brought me a Bobcat out here, a three foot mini Bobcat with solid tires, which is the worst setup you could have. Because what solid tires do is they bury themselves in soil. Not only that, they're a lot harder to ride, but the one good thing about it is you don't have to replace them as often. But for a mini Bobcat that's underpowered anyway, um, it's not a good setup. So if that lasted about 10 minutes and I returned that very promptly. The good news is I didn't have to pay F&B a dime even though I lost my whole day. Plus I had my guys out here working. You know, we weren't able to get anything done. We shut down early. Now we're trying a new day and this is what it's gonna be. This equipment from Baker is gonna get the job done so far but we will update you as the day progresses. Thanks for watching. Here we are, end of day three. It's actually day two because of the problems we had on day two, we didn't get a lot done, but we've loaded up the little dingo here and we generated all of that dirt in six hours, that entire driveway, which is about, that's about 30, uh, 30 feet by 22 feet. And it's full of dirt. We did that with six hours with a working machine. And it was this little dingo. Anyway, the dingo seemed to get the job done. You know, a working newer piece of equipment that was uh, well maintained. Didn't uh, break down at all today. This was a different rental place, like I said. So sometimes you got I got to drive further to get uh, decent equipment. But in the end, it's worth it. Also, what I'd like to know is anybody that else that's had a dingo, the Vermeer, the mini Bobcat, uh, what kind of luck you guys had with them and which one do you think will be the best one for what the type of stuff I do, you know, in backyard, getting through three foot gates, considering that and, um, you know, not getting stuck in the dirt. That's what I'm looking for, stuff that will roll over sand, soft sand get through a three foot opening and uh, get the job done. So post some comments on uh, what you think is the best. Vermeer, the mini Bobcat, which has no tracks, unfortunately. The Dingo, which has tracks. The Vermeer has the tracks. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.